Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths 2020 Paper 1. This is the solution video for question 4. Question 4 is our first calculus question. We're given the diagram here. The diagram below shows two functions, f of x and g of x. f of x is this cubic function, uh, x cubed plus kx plus 15x plus 8. And the g of x is this linear function here um, that they don't give to us. Given that the f prime of 3 is equal to minus 12, so that's the first derivative at x equal to 3 is equal to minus 12, show that k is equal to minus 9, where f prime of 3 is the derivative of f of x at x minus 3. So for this, f of x, sorry, good. f of x is equal to x cubed plus kx squared plus 15x plus 8. Okay, so we can differentiate this, even though there's a k in here, um, don't be afraid of it. You can just go and differentiate it as normal. So f prime of x is equal to, bring down the 3 and reduce the power by 1. Same thing here, multiply down by 2. So that's plus 2kx and then plus 15. So nothing to be afraid of there. Then I'm going to sub in 3 and let it equal to minus 12. So uh, f prime of 3 is equal to 3 times 3 squared plus 2k times 3 plus 15 is equal to minus 12. And what you can see here is that we just have an equation and all we have is a k. So we can find what k is and we know that our answer should be minus 9. So 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27. 2 by 3 is 6, so that's plus 6k, plus 15 is equal to minus 12. So 6k is equal to minus 12, minus 15, minus 27. So that's 6k is equal to uh, minus 12, minus 15, minus 27 is minus 54. So that means k is equal to minus 54 divided by 6, which is equal to minus 9 as required. Part B says the function g of x is the line that passes through the two turning points of f of x shown on the previous page. Find the equation of g of x. So let's just take a quick look at our, our diagram. So here we can see that it's passing through the two turning points uh, of f of x. And we want to find the equation of g of x. So if we can find the coordinates of this turning point and the coordinates of this turning point, then we can just use those um, coordinates to find the equation of g of x. So the first thing to do is to find the turning points. So for the turning points, you need the first derivative. Um, sorry, the turning point is equal to the first derivative of x, which we already did. Uh, that's 3x squared. Now, I am going to sub in my k equal to minus 9. So instead of um, 2k, it's 2 times minus 9. So that's eight, uh, minus 18x plus 15 is equal to 0. So that's my uh, first derivative. And I let it equal to 0. And now I solve and find my values of x. So I can divide across by 3 to make it simpler. That would be x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. Factorize this then. Factors of 5 that add together to give me minus 6, minus 5 and minus 1. So x minus 5 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. So that means x is equal to 5 and x is equal to 1. So that's the x coordinate of my turning points. To find then the y coordinates, that would be the f of 5, which is equal to 5 cubed minus 9 times 5 squared plus 15 times 5 plus 8. So the f of 5 is equal to minus 17. So that gives me a turning point of 5 comma minus 17. And then to find the other one, sub in 1, so the f of 1 
is equal to 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 squared plus 15 times 1 plus 8. So that is equal to 15. So that gives me a turning point of 1 comma 15. So this one is a max, not that they asked, and this is a min. Now to find then the equation of my function g of x, I've got the two points, okay? That's the coordinates, that's the points there, that's the coordinates. So then I can just use my equation of a line formula um, from coordinate geometry to find the equation of the line. So y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Now, to use that, I need m, so I need m, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that is equal to, we can say that uh, this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So that would be 15 minus minus 17, 15 minus minus 17 is 15 plus 17, and then uh, 1 minus 5, which is minus 4, 1 minus 5. So that's equal to uh, 32 divided by minus 4. So m is equal to minus 8. Now we can sub into our formula. So we can use either point for this. Um, let's use 17, minus 17, 5. So y minus minus 17 is plus 17 equals minus 8 times x minus x1, so it'll be minus 5. So then y is equal to minus 8 by x is minus 8x, minus 8 by minus 5 is plus 40. Let's take 17 from both sides. So y is equal to minus 8x plus 40 minus 17 is plus 23. So that's the equation of our line g of x. And we can double check there uh, if it makes sense. Uh, y is equal to minus 8x plus 23. So that means it has a slope of minus 8. It has a negative slope there that's quite steep, so it looks about right. And it has a y-intercept of 23. The y-intercept has gone way up here. So yeah, it looks like it should be, uh, should be right. Part C then. And sorry, before I go on to part C, um, this one started out as a calculus problem and then all of a sudden they threw us into our coordinate geometry. So we really need to have um, all of our tools at our disposal at all times. Part C then, show that the graph G of X contains the point of inflection of F of X. So that's going to be this point here, the point of inflection of F of X. So what do we know ab about a point of inflection? We know that for a point of inflection, we know that the second derivative of x is equal to zero. So if we find the second derivative, the second derivative of x is equal to, basically let's differentiate this. So two by three is six x to the power of one minus 18. And we let that equal to zero. So 6x is equal to 18. So x then is equal to 3. And what you do then is you find the f of 3. The f of 3, um, which is equal to 3 cubed minus 9 times 3 squared plus 15 times 3 plus 8. So that is equal to uh, 3 cubed minus 9 times 3 squared plus 15 times 3 plus 8 is equal to minus 1. So the f of 3 is equal to minus 1, which gives us the point 3 minus 1. Now we need to show that um, g of x contains this point. So if we go back to our g of x formula or equation, it's y is equal to minus 8x plus 23. We got to sub in 3 and 1, or 3 and minus 1. So it should be minus 1 is equal to minus 8 times 3 plus 23. 
So minus 1 is equal to minus 8 times 3 is minus 24 plus 23. Minus 1 is equal to minus 1. So therefore, g of x contains the point of inflection of f of x. Okay, if you have any questions, just ask in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.